Well, some of these technologies are creeping into some cars, such as sensing the presence of other cars, and maybe even, as you say, automatically slowing down or even stopping, and so forth. Okay, how close are we to the driverless car? Well, I think that uh, some of the research that's being done uh, more recently um, is showing that it's a bit closer than uh, we had first anticipated. A lot of great work is being done by Google in right. this area. Well, and they've got, they have cars that are right. going out there now, right, mm -hmm. and driving around right. without driver control, without normally driver control. And so they've been able to demonstrate um, through fusion, what we call fusions of sensor information, map information, the ability to take a big step forward in uh, autonomous vehicles. So I think it's a bit closer in than we thought. Um, there's still uh, plenty of work to do under all the various conditions and so on. And so we're working very hard as uh, other technology companies are as well. What are the conditions under which we are most likely to see, as you say, fully autonomous cars first? What are the most attractive conditions? Well, I think um, certainly f high freeway, highway conditions where um, intersections, pedestrians, all of those things are more controlled. Right, and, and they tend to be probably the most likely place you'll see. So you get on the, the freeway, you set the destination, and uh, right. you know, you'll uh, get control again when you get off the freeway. Right. So that's probably the most obvious and most likely place that they'll start. Another thing we've heard about, seen in the movies and stuff, is the heads-up display. Mm -hmm. You continue to look through the windshield, but data information's there right in front of you. How close are we to that? Well, there are heads-up displays in production today, yeah. and uh, we're excited about the technology. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we're focused on uh, voice recognition for driver distraction. Heads-up displays also keep those eyes on more focused on the road. And so, but what we're working on is is improving the performance of heads-up displays today. Uh, we don't see the contrast ratio and brightness right. to make them really usable under all conditions as a primary means for feedback. Right. But we're working on technologies today that are going to enable that. And that leads into this idea of augmented reality. And right. we think about navigation systems today, and they do a good job kind of taking you about a, within a block of where you really need right. to be. Right. And uh, especially if all the buildings look alike, you're searching for that uh, address, address and which so on. probably isn't which on the building. And when you're looking right. for that address, you're not looking at the road. And right. so um, it's really exciting to think about the opportunity for augmented reality to actually point you to where you're supposed to go, that last uh, block or 20 feet or 30 feet or whatever.